Hi guys, today I'm going to talk about the current hot topic for gaming and GPUs. It's about a synchronous compute and how most of the tech press get it wrong or do not tell you the full benefits of this feature available with the X12 and Vulkan. We often hear the tech press or ill-informed gamers say things like async compute only helps to increase shader utilization or because AMD GPUs aren't being fully utilized only they benefit from async compute. Even stranger things are said, such as NVIDIA GPUs already have good shader utilization, so they would not benefit from async compute. Now, these statements are not outright wrong, but they are half-truths and very misleading. To understand the real potential of async compute, we firstly have to talk about DirectX 11 and prior APIs on the PC. They were all serial by design. Think of it like a single pipeline in which the game engine, drivers and GPU decide which tasks to render in order, one after the other. Now, this was fine for a long time because it's how 3D rendering and game engines evolved over the past two decades. But this started to change around 2009 when AMD together with Sony designed GCN. They designed a hardware scheduler powerful enough to introduce concurrent processing of multiple different work items or queues. This concurrent execution happens at the shader or sim level where the graphics and compute tasks can run simultaneously. This is perhaps where most people get the idea that it helps in shader utilization particularly due to GCN's poor shader utilization in DirectX 11. However, the most important feature of Async Compute is that it was originally designed to be multi-engine, rather than just graphics and compute running in shaders. What is multi-engine? Think of a GPU architecture. You have vast arrays of shaders in compute units or streaming multi-processors. You also have arrays of rasterizers or ROPs. Another important unit on GPUs are DMA or Direct Memory Access units. These are separate units or engines that perform different types of workloads. For example, the rasterizers are commonly used for shadows, particles, and some form of anti-aliasing, such as multi-sample or super-sampling AA. The DMAs handle the texture streaming, as well as more advanced effects that require temporal frame data reconstructions. To push the boundaries of graphics rendering, it makes no sense to stick with the old paradigm of serial rendering, because this artificially limits the processing potential of your GPU. For example, while the shaders are running, the rasterizers and the DMA are idling, and vice versa. Let's return to the previous example of serial rendering DirectX 11 and see how DirectX 12 and Async Compute could benefit GPUs regardless of shader utilization. In DirectX 12, there's three types of queues, graphics, compute, and copy. You could, in effect, have all three different queues running concurrently. So while the shaders are doing particle simulation and post-processing, your rasterizers are doing the shadow maps while the DMAs are streaming textures. In effect, DirectX 12 and Async Compute can take a serial rendering pipeline which underutilizes all GPUs and make them more parallel with concurrent execution to fully utilize all the GPU's separate engines, the shaders, the rasterizers, and the DMA. Now, before some criticize me for using references provided by AMD, let me assure you that this is what DirectX 12 and Vulkan developers are talking about behind the scenes as well. An example, Microsoft's DirectX 12 tutorial also emphasizes the use of compute shaders to handle some tasks, freeing up the rasterizer to do other work and to enable a synchronous compute. Developers like DICE have also presented at GDC to show how this feature can be used as a great performance boost. In my previous video about Polaris, I mentioned that DICE used compute shader culling techniques to boost the performance of the games. Despite taking up shader resources, this leads to a high performance gain and it can run asynchronously on top to further boost performance. Remedy, the developers of Quantum Break utilize a lot of copy queues for the temporal effects and scene reconstruction. This technique would simply be too slow on a serial API or hardware not capable of async compute. We can even go back to the start in 2009. There's a great article on Gamma Sutra that interviews Mark Cerny, a lead system architect at Sony, on the inner details of GCN and asynchronous compute. They design it to be ambitious and future-proof. Quote, Cerny envisions a dozen programs running simultaneously on that GPU, using it to perform physics computations, to perform collision calculations, and to do ray tracing for audio. In talking about the separate engines of the GPU, Cerny said, for example, something like shadow map rendering doesn't even use a pixel shader. It's entirely done by the vertex shaders and the rasterization hardware. So graphics aren't using most of the shaders available in the compute unit. Times like that during the game frame are an opportunity to say, okay, all that compute you wanted to do, turn it up to 11 now. The most fascinating thing for me is how forward-looking the design is. This is what Cerny said. The time frame when we were designing these features was 2009-2010. And the time frame in which people would use these features fully 
2015-2017. It's amazing to see how it turned out, with console developers routinely using this feature for a while now. While async compute is indeed a powerful feature, PC developers are only starting to use it, so the gains seen so far are quite small, anywhere from 5-20%. to I suspect by 2017, as developers gain more experience, you can get a larger performance gain if your GPU supports this feature at the hardware level. For gaming and virtual reality in particular, having true asynchronous compute capabilities is directly related to future-proofing. In summary, whenever you see people describing async compute as only to increase shader utilization or won't benefit GPUs which already have good shader utilization, please feel free to correct them because it's an often repeated misunderstanding and it does the tech and gaming community a disservice to keep on perpetuating this myth. If you found this video to be informative, please like, share and hit subscribe. Thanks.